so um, this is kind of the way that you'll see it most frequently in visual format. Um, and kind of what I like to call it is the basket weaving format. Um, uh, sometimes, I think y'all have done an art project where you uh, did some kind of weaving thing, or maybe you did weaving when you made placemats around Thanksgiving for projects or something. But when you weave, you have um, threads that go horizontally, and then you have like threads that go vertically. This is a terrible, terrible representation. <laughs> but as you can see, and thing they go over, under, over, under, over, under. All right, so um, just remember you have ones that go vertically and ones that go horizontally. So um, one of the ways that you will see multiplying decimals in picture form is what I like to call the basket weaving. So here's what I mean. All right, so there's three tenths represented by vertical shading. They shaded one tenth vertically, two tenths vertically, and three tenths vertically. Now what they're going to do is they're going to shade the other decimal, four tenths, horizontally, either up here or down here, just somewhere, but four across. So there they go. What they've done is with a different color, they've shaded four tenths across. Now as you can see, there's this little group here that has both this color shading and this color shading overlapping. And if you count those, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 hundredths, just like we got before 12 hundredths. Oops. Um, and <clears throat> like I said, when we just take these numbers, multiply them, ignore the decimal point, 4 times 3 is 12, count the decimal places in the problem, there's 2 put that many decimal places in our product. So there's two. And there you have it. There's 12 hundredths, which is the exact same thing you're looking at right here. There's three um, hundredths in four groups, or four hundredths in three groups. Either way, there's 12 hundredths. All right, so we got one more to look at, I think. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so we have 1 and 2 tenths times 7 tenths. So this one's going to be a little bit different. Instead of just sitting there with the um, 100, all right, I'm going to have the one hole. I'm going to have one hole and 2 tenths. And you can still do the basket weaving method with a picture in this situation. So as you can see, there's 1 and 2 tenths now. They're just going to go and shade 7 of those across seven tenths. So there's one and two tenths, and there's seven right there. So if we counted all of these, because there's one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, horizontally, right? And that's the same as us basically looking at whoop, this many of our hundredths. And just counting up those hundredths. So they get 84 hundredths. The easiest way for us to get our answer, besides counting all of those little pieces, of course, is using our algorithm. So let's set it up. We have 1 and 2 tenths times 7 tenths. I'm going to take off a 0. Because remember, all that zero is going to do is give me another step, but it does not change the value of my answer. Um, in this situation, the decimal points and place values randomly lined up. I didn't do anything to line those up. That's just the way it goes. So you didn't do that on purpose. It just happened, and that's okay. All right, so 7 times 2 is 14. So the 4 goes down. Carry the 1. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 1 is 8. Now, um, last week when we had old numbers, we usually only had a decimal place up here at the top. But remember, now that we're dealing with two decimals, we have more than one decimal place. We have two decimal places in the entire problem. So we need two in the entire solution. So look at the top number and the bottom number.